All right, so in the last video, we said we would define the definite integral as the limit of these Riemann sums, these left and right Riemann sums. Okay, so in this video, we'll, we'll make that formula and we'll, we'll write down that limit definition. But to do that, we're going to need to introduce a little bit more notation. So what we'll introduce is called summation notation, which is just a fancy mathematical way of writing sums. So we use this symbol which is called sigma. So this is the Greek letter, capital sigma. Okay. And what this will mean is sum the terms inside uh, the sigma. So the way we would write this out is we'd say, okay, the sum from i equals one to say three of x i, right? This means sum of x i from i equals zero to i equals three. Okay, or sorry, i equals one to i equals three. Right? Since we're starting from one down here, so this is i, i equals one, where i is this index of these things, right? So what this means is x one plus x two plus x three. Okay, and we're using this sum not to do sums from one to three, but to do sums from you know one to a million or something. Something where uh, we want to write down a mathematical formula for it, but we don't ever want to have to write down you know a giant sum of you know a hundred terms or a thousand terms or a million terms, right? So we use this notation to kind of make it simpler. Okay, so let's do an example. All right, let's say we knew that x one was five, x two was three, and x one or sorry x three was one. And the sum from i equals one to three of x i is going to be x one plus x two plus x three, which is five plus three plus one, which gives us nine. Okay. Nice thing about sums is, you know, we can do uh, addition of sums and you know constant products, and that you'll still get what you think you get. So right, if I had, let's say, i equals one to let's say five now, of a times x i, right? Then this would be a x one plus a x two plus a x three plus a x four plus a x five, or a times x one plus x two, three, four, five, right? And you can see why even with five, it's easier to have that summation notation than to write out the sum. Right, so this is the same thing as a times the sum from i equals one to five. Okay, this is a nice flexible notation uh, where you're treating the sum of this term with the index variable down there to the end index, saying you go from one x one to x five. Right. So another example would be if I started from say zero, i equals zero to four of a x i right this would be a times x zero plus x one plus x two plus x three plus x four so wherever this index starts oh, let me scroll down a bit this was i equals zero to four wherever this starts that's our first term wherever it ends is our last term right so this last one is x four and this is the same number of terms as one to five but now we're zero to four, but it's still five terms. Okay, so we'll use this sort of notation to write down a formula for our Riemann sums uh, that we are computing, you know, by hand in the last video. So let me grab this picture here. Okay, so this is from our last video. We had this left-hand Riemann sum of this function, and now we'll just call it f of t, just for simplicity, right? And we said, okay, we, we got this from this speed thing. If you're interested, go watch the previous video. But for now, we're just saying this is some function uh, that we're approximating by these four rectangles here. We're going to approximate the area under this function f by these four rectangles. Right? So the area here, the way that you wrote, right? Let's think about how we could write down a formula for the area here. Right? Well, we could denote each of these points here by x or you know x sub one or x sub two uh, but i guess we're using t so let's call these t zero 
right? So let's say this point here will be T0. This is T1, T2, T3, T4, right? So just in the same way that we had those X sub whatevers, we'll have T sub whatever index. And we'll count from zero to uh, four because we have four rectangles, okay? If you notice each rectangle has width, they all have the same width, delta T equals 0 0.5 in this case, okay? So we could write down the area of these four rectangles as the sum, right, from I equals zero to three, since this gives us four rectangles, right? And then the heights of these are given by, this is F at T zero, right? This one is F at T one. This gives me the height at T two and this gives me the height at T3, right, 4.5. So this is the height of the rectangles, F at TI times delta T, right? And then that delta T, you know, we can pull out of the sum if we wanted to, right? So if we wanted to compute this, right, let's just check what this gives us. This formula gives us F at T0 plus F at T1 plus F at T2 plus F at T3 times delta T, right? If I plug in the numbers again, this gives me F at zero plus F at 0 0.5 plus F at one plus F at 1.5 times 0 0.5, right? The value of that is zero plus 0 0.5 plus two plus 4.5, where I'm just reading off these function values from the graph here. All those times 0 0.5, Right, and you can check that this gives us 3.5 miles, right? Or 3.5, since I don't have the units here anymore, but um, this is the same number that we got uh, when we computed this by hand by saying, okay, let's compute the area here, plus the area there, plus the area there, plus the area there, right? That's technically this formula where all we did was we distributed this 0.5, right? So we're thinking about this formula here Right, we can think of this as maybe write this down in English. Right, so if we have sum from i equals zero to three of f of t i times delta t, this is the sum of, and then each of these rectangles. Right, so the sum of the four rectangles, sum of the four rectangle areas with each rectangle area given by f of t i times delta t, right? Which is height times width, right? Just the area of a box, okay? And so this brings us to a general formula for a left-hand sum, general formula or left Riemann sums, right? And general, I mean, we'll do it for N boxes, right? So in this case here, we did it for four boxes. We could do it for N boxes, right? So in this case, the area, let's call it IL, or the approximate integral from the left, is going to be the sum from i equals zero to n minus one, right? So we're starting from endpoint t zero, going to the second to last endpoint, so at n minus one, of f t i times delta t, okay? So if you wanted to compute this, you would have to find the delta t's and the t i's. So here, n equals the number of boxes, Delta T is then going to be the width here. So it'll be your endpoint B minus A over N. Right? B A, you know, A to B is your interval that you're doing this uh, Riemann sum over. So in this case, we're doing it from zero to two. So B was two, A was zero, 
and our delta t was 2 minus 0 over 4, which gave us a 0 0.5 for delta t, right? And if we wanted to find these points ti, right, we would start at ti equals, we'd start at a, right? And then t1 would be a plus delta t, t2 would be a plus 2 delta t, right? And so on, all the way up till tn minus 1, which would be a plus n minus 1 delta t. And it should be the same thing as b minus delta t, right? Because then t at n would be the endpoint b, right? But for the left hand rule, we only go up to n minus 1, so we don't need this one here. Okay, so not needed for left hand. Okay, but we could write down the same sort of formula for the right hand rule. So let's write it down and then we'll check that it works. Okay, so then the right hand, or the right hand Riemann sum will be I R integral, or sorry, sum sigma from I equals one to N Right, so instead of zero to n minus one, this will go from one to n. And this just has to do with which endpoint we're checking for um, this Riemann sum. F of ti, delta t. So inside the sum, these two things look exactly the same. The only difference is the starting and end point. And index. Okay, so let's check that this works. Okay, so let's go and grab uh, our right hand sum from the last video. Okay, so let's check this guy here. Okay, so remember when we had this uh, was when we assumed the right hand rule or kind of approximating that function. So we said, okay, they're constant speeds and we'll use the right hand value to define what that value or what that speed is on each interval right so if we wanted to compute the area under this f of t right now i'm using these areas okay so let's check that the formula i wrote down up there gives me the right area okay so let's see okay area i r right the approximate integral using the right hand rule is the sum from i equals 1 to n of f of t i delta t where n in this case is 4 right we have four boxes which means delta t is b minus a over n which is 2 minus 0 since that's my interval over 4 which gives me 2 over 4, or 0 0.5 for my delta t, which is what I knew the width was, right? The width is delta t equals 0 0.5, right? Half an hour. Okay. And then my points, my ti's, are t0 equals a, which in this case is 0. t1 is a plus delta t, which is then going to be 0 plus 0 0.5, which is 0 0.5. My t2 is then going to be a plus 2 delta t, right, which is going to give me 1. My t3 is going to be given a plus 3 delta t, which is 1.5. And my t4 is then going to be a plus 4 delta t, which is 2 or b. Okay, so it's the last end, last point, so it should be the end point in this case, right? So if we look here, this is t1, t2, t3, t4 right so this is all kind of uh agreeing so far okay so then let's use this formula right so then the approximate integral using this riemann sum from the right i equals one to n of f of ti delta t is going to be f of 0.5 plus f of 1 plus f of 1.5 plus f of 2 
times 0 0.5, my width of those boxes, right? And then this gives me uh, 0 0.5 plus 2 plus 4.5 plus 8 all times 0 0.5. If I throw this into a calculator, I'll find that that does give me 7.5, which is the same area as when I computed this by computing each area and adding them up at the end, right? And that makes sense, because if I just distribute this 0.5, then I get the same formula that I was working with last time, okay? So this is indeed the right formula to use for these uh, right-hand Riemann sums, right? So the kind of process, right? So computing a Riemann sum, from either the left or the right. Step one is determine, uh, right? So computing a Riemann sum to approximate, let's say an integral with bounds, a to b of some function f of t dt, right? So we determine number of boxes to use, we'll call that n. Step two is then define Delta T, the step size, the width of those boxes, which is B minus A over N, width of boxes. Step three would then be to find the endpoints of the boxes, right? So the endpoints T0 equals A, T1 equals A plus delta T, right? Dot, dot, dot. If I were to write a formula for this, it'd be TN would be a plus n delta t. Okay. So then t0 would be a, t1 would be a plus delta t, and so on. Then you would apply either the left hand or the right hand formula. Apply left, right formula. All right. So if you wanted to do the approximation from the left, we would use the sum from i equals zero to n minus one f of t i times delta t. And if I want to use the right-hand sum, it would be the sum from i equals one to n of f of t i delta t, right? Or you could use both, okay? So let's go back and look at this, you know, graphically, because we've kind of been Moving away from the graphs for, for some time, right? So let's go back to four is the graphs I was drawing just now, right? So the we're trying to approximate this integral from zero to two of this function, which has some value. If I actually computed the antiderivative and did the proper subtractions, this is the number I would get, okay? The left-hand sum is those four boxes, right? where I'm using the left-hand point to determine the height of these boxes. Right-hand sum, same thing, four boxes. I'm using the right endpoint to determine the height of these boxes. Okay, so both of these, if I change n, I would just apply that formula to calculate this new area here, right? So if I up n, those numbers change, and that's just applying this formula behind the scenes, right? So it's not, it's not giving us that formula here. It's just computing the areas of these using uh, the formula that I just wrote down. Okay, and so then the idea here is if I increase n, I increase the number of boxes in either of these two approximations, the blue one is going to get closer to the actual area, and the red one's also getting close to the area. So the red one's overshooting here, the blue one is undershooting, but they're undershooting and overshooting by less and less as we increase this n. Right? If we go all the way up to 100, which is as far as this goes, they're still not quite at the true area, but they're close. And if I kept pushing n off to infinity, they would approach the actual value in the limit as n goes to infinity, okay? And so we'll use that to define what this integral means, this definite integral, okay? So let's switch back to here. Okay, so then we will define a definite integral, right, which is integral a to b f of t dt. We'll just define this as the limit as n goes to infinity of i l or i r, right? And because these are 
both approximating the same thing, they should have the same limit. Right? It's the limit as n goes to infinity of i equals zero to n minus one of f of t i delta t. Same thing as the limit of this other formula, right? As i goes to one to n of f of t i delta t. Because in limit as n goes to infinity, this first endpoint and this second endpoint are gonna get really, really close together. They're basically in, be indistinguishable. And same thing with the second less endpoint, n minus one, second less endpoint, n. Those two endpoints will get really, really close together. So you won't even be able to tell the difference between these two approximations. And whatever the value of uh, these sums are in the limit, that will define the definite integral from a to b of the function f. Okay? And so uh, in the videos for the next problem solving session will show the relationship between this definite integral and the indefinite integrals that we've been doing, where we're actually computing those antiderivatives. And we'll show that there's actually a fundamental theorem that relates these two things. And when you can write down the antiderivative, computing a definite integral is super easy. Okay? Much easier than doing this kind of approximation on the computer. The approximation on the computer is good in the cases where you can't actually write down the antiderivative, right? So some of these integrals, they're just impossible to solve by hand, but a computer can do these rectangles. It can do a million rectangles in 10 seconds, right? So even for really difficult things that we can never do by hand, using these Riemann sum techniques on a computer with a giant N, we're gonna get really, really close to the actual value of these integrals and approximate things that otherwise we have no way of solving, okay? So we'll get more into that next time. All right, we'll stop here.